Metals play an important role in mechanical engineering. Compared to other materials, they can withstand relatively high loads, but still have sufficient deformability not to break immediately under stress. In addition, metals have a very good thermal and electrical conductivity, which gives these materials a wide range of applications. Due to the special role of metals in mechanical engineering, their atomic structure will be discussed in more detail in the following. The atomic cohesion of a metal comes about through a special bond, which is therefore also called a metal bonding. In such a bond, the metal atoms release all their outer electrons. In this way, the energetically favorable noble gas configuration is achieved. By donating the electrons, electrically positively charged metal ions remain. Due to the released electrons, a kind of gaseous state of free electrons forms around the positive cations. This is also known as electron gas. Thus, two forces act on the cations. On the one hand, there are attractive forces between the positively charged ions and the negatively charged electron gas. On the other hand, there are repulsive forces between the cations themselves due to their identical charges. The electron gas thus tries to bring the cations closer together, while the cations themselves repel each other. Because of the different charge distribution, the attractive and repulsive forces obey different laws. For two cations, the diagram shows the course of the attractive force due to the electron gas, shown in blue, and the repulsive force due to the identical charge, shown in red. At a large distance, the attraction of the electron gas outweighs the repulsion of the atoms, so that the two cations initially move closer together. The resulting force on the atoms is shown in green in the diagram. It is the sum of the attractive and repulsive forces. In the area marked in blue, the atoms initially move closer together. As the distance between the two metal ions decreases, the repulsive force increases, becoming disproportionately larger than the attractive force. If the distance is too close, the repulsive force is greater than the attractive force of the electron gas. The green curve shows the resulting force on the atoms, which is repulsive in the red area. The distance between the atoms therefore increases again. Finally, an equilibrium distance is reached in which both forces are equal and the resulting force disappears. In this stable position, the cations maintain a fixed distance. In this way, a typically regular atomic structure is formed in a metal lattice. Such a regularity in the atomic structure is also called crystal structure or lattice structure. The substance itself is called crystalline. The distance between two ions is characteristic of the metal and is called the lattice constant. The lattice constant is in the order of 250 to 500 picometer. A solid iron cube with an edge length of 25 millimeters contains about a quadrillion atoms. This is roughly equivalent to the number of 1 liter milk bottles it would take to fill the entire volume of the earth with milk. In the typical crystal structure of metals, there is in principle always a smallest unit that repeats itself at regular intervals. Such an elementary unit is also called a unit cell. In the simplest case, the unit cell has the shape of a cube, with the atoms in the corners. This structure is then repeated over and over again throughout the metal. Such a simple lattice structure is also called a primitive cubic lattice structure. However, there are very few substances that have such a simple cubic structure. One example is radioactive polonium. Technically, variations of this lattice type are much more common. These include the so-called body-centered cubic lattice, the face-centered cubic lattice, and the hexagonal closest packed lattice. These each have different properties, particularly with regard to deformability. Before going into this in more detail, the structure of the three types of lattice mentioned should first be considered in detail. A variant of the primitive cubic lattice is the so-called body-centered cubic lattice structure. In this atomic structure, the individual atomic planes lie in the spaces between the planes below them. The atoms of each layer do not touch each other, but are only in contact with the atoms of the layer above or below. As with the primitive cubic lattice, the unit cell has the basic shape of a cube. In addition to the corner atoms, there is now another atom centered in the middle of the cube. This arrangement of atoms in the unit cell gives the body-centered cubic lattice structure its name. Typical metals with a body-centered cubic lattice are the elements iron, chromium, molybdenum, vanadium, and tungsten. In the body-centered cubic lattice, one atom is in direct contact with eight surrounding atoms. This number of direct neighboring atoms is also called the coordination number. The coordination number in the body-centered cubic lattice structure is therefore 8, 
whereas in the simple cubic lattice it is 6. When representing unit cells, it is useful to reduce the size of the atoms, even if they are actually touching. To show the spatial arrangement of the atoms, it is also common to use dashes to indicate the basic shape of the unit cell. However, these lines do not represent bonding forces, as is often claimed. If we realistically consider the atoms as touching spheres, we can determine the so-called packing density of a lattice. This is the percentage of the unit cell that is filled with atoms. For the body-centered cubic lattice, a packing density of 68% can be determined in this way. This means that 68% of the total atomic structure is occupied by atoms. The remaining 32% is the space between the atoms. In contrast to the body-centered cubic lattice, the atoms of a lattice plane are maximally close to each other in the hexagonal lattice. A single atom of this lattice plane is always touched by a total of six neighboring atoms. The atomic plane above is in principle of the same structure. However, it is shifted in such a way that the atoms of this plane fit exactly into the recesses of the plane below. Thus, one atom of the upper lattice plane sits in the gap formed by three atoms of the lower layer. This sequence of layers is now constantly repeated. Note that in the top view of this lattice structure, there are always gaps through which you can look, so to speak. For such a hexagonal densest packing of atoms, the unit cell can be traced back to a hexagonal base surface. In the center of the unit cell, there are three more atoms, which sit in the resulting atomic gaps of the base surface and the top surface. Since the individual atomic planes that make up the lattice are maximally closest packed, they are also referred to as closest packed atomic planes. Therefore, such a lattice is also called a hexagonal closest packed lattice. The metals titanium, cobalt, zinc and magnesium typically exist in such a hexagonal lattice structure with maximum packing density. An atom in the hexagonal closest packed lattice structure is surrounded by a total of 12 direct neighbors. The coordination number in this type of lattice is therefore 12. The packing density in the hexagonal closest packed lattice corresponds to the maximum possible packing density of 74%. This maximum packing density applies quite generally to any spherical body. The addition of closest packed in the designation of the hexagonal lattice already implies that there are also other hexagonal lattice structures than the hexagonal closest packed lattice shown. Graphite, for example, also has a hexagonal lattice structure, but it is not closest packed. Compared to the densest packing, the simple hexagonal graphite structure lacks the central atoms on the base and top surface of the unit cells. An atom is therefore no longer surrounded by six, but only by three neighboring atoms. This also applies analogously to the atomic planes shown in red. Here too, the central atoms on the base and top surfaces are missing. The different colored atomic layers are therefore offset and can be shifted relatively easily. The shifted atomic layers can be separated from each other relatively easily. This process takes place, for example, when drawing with a pencil on a sheet of paper. The graphite layers come off and stick to the structure of the paper. Let us now take a closer look at the structure of the face-centered cubic lattice. This lattice type, like the hexagonal closest packed lattice, has maximally packed atomic planes. However, the stacking order of the planes is different. Initially, the second layer is still stacked as in the hexagonal closest packed lattice, sitting in the gaps of the underlying layer. However, the third layer is no longer identical to the first layer as in the hexagonal lattice but is located in the free gaps through which it was still possible to see in the hexagonal lattice. In this way, the stacking sequence of the most densely packed layers results in the series ABC. This sequence is now repeated over and over again in the lattice. In a face-centered cubic lattice, the basic shape of the unit cell is not hexagonal, as might be suggested by its similarity to the hexagonal lattice. The unit cell is actually a cube and therefore a cubic crystal system. Regarding the horizontally aligned closest packed planes, the unit cell stands on the corner of the cube. It can be seen that in addition to the atoms in the cube corners, further atoms are centered on the cube faces. Therefore, this lattice type is called face-centered cubic. Note that the face-centered cubic lattice and the hexagonal closed packed lattice differ only in the stacking order of the densest packed planes. The packing density in the face-centered cubic lattice is thus identical to the maximum possible packing density of the hexagonal closest packed lattice, which is also 74%. The coordination number of 12 is also identical to that of the hexagonal closest packed lattice. Typical metals with a face-centered cubic structure are aluminum, lead, copper, and nickel. 
Metals have different properties depending on the type of lattice, especially with regard to formability. This is illustrated by the example metals mentioned earlier. Representatives of the face-centered cubic lattice are the metals copper, aluminum, and lead, which are all very soft. The face-centered cubic lattice structure is obviously very formable. Typical metals with a hexagonal lattice structure are zinc and magnesium. Metals with this lattice structure are relatively brittle and do not form well. These metals tend to break before they can be significantly deformed. For example, zinc die castings break very quickly under load without deforming significantly. Metals with hexagonal lattice structures are therefore very difficult to form. Metals with a body-centered cubic lattice structure, on the other hand, exhibit a deformation behavior that lies between the aforementioned lattice types. Typical representatives of the moderately deformable body-centered cubic lattice structure are iron, chromium and tungsten, which are significantly better formable than the hexagonal metals, but less formable than the face-centered cubic structures. The reason for this is the different slip systems, which are discussed in more detail in another video.